We're at Tebracuna in far northeastern Tasmania. It's the homelands of the Trawalway people, my people, and part of it is a national park today, Mount William National Park. My ancestors have lived in this region for tens of thousands of years. There's stories of them telling the colonists they remembered when they could walk across. So that's the last ice age. And so every time I walk around, I think about the, all of those peoples and they're still here. My ancestors that were last here were uh, removed and exiled in the 1830s to the Bass Strait Islands. Making art is a way to directly connect, to try and understand what happened in the past here. So it's a kind of conversation between me and the stories and the objects that remain and the people to try to bring the events to life again, to give myself and any viewers of the artworks that chance to think differently than if they're looking at an archival record or being at a place where they're not aware of, of particular stories and events. So it's really ongoing process of walking country with sometimes a bit of knowledge and other times it's telling me something that I didn't know before. So it's a way to continue culture at the same time art becomes one of the outcomes. One of my ancestors is Dalrymple Briggs. She eventually married a convict called Thomas Johnson. She was born out this way off the northeast of Tasmania. She uh, was probably born on what's known as Little Kangaroo Island and moved around between the other islands as a child and then became a servant on Norfolk Plains. Somehow she's uh, taken from her family and lives with this colonial physician and his wife. She's one of almost 200 Aboriginal children that lived with colonists up to 1850. I've kind of stopped at that date and thought, I really want to work out what the hell happened. And that's really genocidal intent to remove children from their families. We're heading to what's now a paddock with sheep and crops, and it's uh, the place where Dalrymple Briggs lived when she was a young girl. Dalrymple Briggs was one of those children that were uh, taken and they became servants to some of these landholders in the region right where we are today. She lived and uh, narrow, narrowly escaped death uh, at one time. So it was coming on dusk and Dalrymple ran from the hut that was here uh, crying murder and two brothers called Brumby, they came past. She was running for help. They intercepted her and heard her story. Uh, they heard Mount Garrett say he could do what he liked with his black servant and they went and reported the incident in Launceston. Three days after that, Dalrymple went and said, oh, my master shot me, mistaking me for a possum. So that case was dismissed and she continued to live with him until he and his wife died. We're heading west to La Trobe on the Paranapple, which is one of the Aboriginal names for the Mersey River. We're going to meet my brother Dave at the last place where our ancestor Dalrymple lived. Hey brother, so good to see you. Oh my god, how crazy. <laughs> This, this is the house where Dalrymple and her husband lived in their later years and it was moved in the 90s here from about three kilometres down river where we were earlier where there's now a memorial. Where the house was is where Dalrymple and, and um, her husband Thomas are buried and the bank of the river's been washed away in that area 
um, and now we have a memorial mm. saying that they're buried there, but there's also these kind of romantic stories about the floods washed the bank away and washed Dalrymple out to sea. So it's kind of fitting that she's taken back out to where she's born, back out to Bass Strait. Because of what happened here in Tasmania, between our people, the colonists, who particularly tried to eradicate us, so much was taken away. Our people from here, you know, so the land lost us, we lost our country. And in all of that, separation from each other, stories and connections were, were really broken, damaged. So for me, art is a way to try to bring things back together. And sometimes magic happens, and I think it's what the sort of thing we can achieve to make culture strong again is think and be creative together.